All right, hi, welcome. So this is this is the second talk on Project Loom today. Ron talked about virtual threads, and there's many other other features that we're actually working on in Project Loom. And I'm going to talk about one of them today, which we call structured concurrency. Okay, so uh, some some text first, and then I'm going to jump into some motivating examples, just explain what this what this subject is about. But basically, what what structured concurrency is about is it's 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 about simplifying cases where you're running some task and it decomposes into some other concurrent tasks, or subtasks as we call them. And there's, a, there's sort of a natural relationship between the task and the subtasks, and we're going to try and preserve that, and that's what the, this, this, this topic is all about. When you start splitting things up and writing things concurrently, there's a whole lot of bugs that can actually occur, especially when you get into things like um, um, shutdown, exceptions, cancellation, all of these kind of things actually are problematic when you start writing this kind of concurrent code. So there's a lot of bugs that can actually can hide here, and this, 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 this concept of, of, um, of, of structured concurrency is, is helped to actually reduce and eliminate a lot of these bugs. And the other thing about structured concurrency, and one of the reasons that we're actually doing this in Project Loom is, first is, is it's, a, it's a concept that actually marries well with virtual threads. We can re represent concurrent tasks as virtual, as, as virtual threads very, very well, and they're, they're, they're cheap and lightweight, and so it's actually a, 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 a really good, good, good match there. So through these examples, and first I'm going to start with a, sort of a motivating kind of example and actually build up from that, is we're going to look at this something like this. So first thing is, 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 is don't mind all this gunk that's up at the top here, but the motivating example that we're actually talking about here are we going to actually use in this presentation is some kind of a service. Think about it maybe as some kind of a web service that's actually going to go and aggregate data from, from, from two different sources. It's called with some, some parameters. I don't know anything about any of this, 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 this enterprise e annotation stuff that's up at the top there. But assume that there's a method which, we, which you can kind of call handle. There's some inputs in it. The code that's in the gray box, and we're going to focus on the gray box in this presentation, is actually going to aggregate data from two places. One is is, is some kind of web service that's off in the cloud. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an Oracle conference. There has to be a cloud in there somewhere. And this, the, other, the other source of the data is, is, is a database, which uh, I've just represented in this is just a, as a stack of coins. Currently, there's money in, in databases. So we're going to write some code in this gray box. It's actually going to aggregate the, um, the, the, so, something from the web service, something from, from the database. So, in order to avoid the distraction of all of the, uh, the, 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 the gunk and the annotations, I'm going to remove them from the presentation so that it allows us to better focus what's in the gray box. So we're going to start with a very, very simple um, implementation of what's in the gray box. And this is actually going to execute the code sequentially. I'm going to call two methods sequentially. One is, is simply named fetch data from web service. We know from the name of the method what it's actually going to go do. It's going to go out on the network, f make some requests over the network to this web service, get something back. Great, it gets it back as a string. It's as simple as I can get in this kind of presentation. The second method is going to go do the same thing, except it's actually going to go to a database. I've got some input. I'm going to go connect to, the, to, 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 some, to some database and get back some rows. Uh, uh, doesn't, doesn't really matter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to aggregate the data. In this particular example, it actually just creates a stream and, uh, and of, 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 the, of, the, of the two results and just, just, a, just, a, just uses a collector just to, um, to, to join the results in, into a string. Lots of things can go wrong in this example. Um, but let's start with, 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 with the with, with first is we can all read this code. If we know basic Java, this is, this is fairly boring code, boring, boring, boring code. Call one statement, it does something. Call the next statement, does something. Now, if something goes wrong with this, What's going to happen? Well, the first thing is, is, is let's suppose something goes wrong fetching that from, from that web service over the network. We get an exception. We can see in the Java stack trace where the exception is. The exception message will hopefully be useful. It's useful. You can actually see what's actually going on. If the request to the database fails, we may also get an exception. And you hope that the exception will actually have useful data. The stack trace will have useful data. It's easy to see what's actually going on, on there, which is great. But this is sequential code. Accessing the web service over the network may, may, may take a, a number of milliseconds, or maybe a couple of seconds, ditto for, 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 for the database. So this is actually running sequentially. As, as, as a whole, this is actually fairly slow code. What if we want to actually to speed this up by having both of these operations run concurrently? So we want to fetch from the web service and the database at the same time. Great, we'll go and try and do that. 
I'm going to start with the first concurrent implementation, which is going to create a virtual thread to do each one of these services. I'm, in Ron's presentation, he introduced you to a, an a executor service that had a policy that created a virtual thread for each task. We're going to use one of these, one of these executor services here. So every time I submit a, sub, sub, a, a, a any, any, any callable or runnable to one of these, uh, to this uh, executor service, it will create a virtual thread to, to, to run that, uh, that task. So we're going to use it in our example here, and let's go and see what actually happens. So I've replaced the, 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 the usages of the, 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 the sequential code. I've now replaced it so, so that I'm actually doing an executor, sub, uh, executor submit. That, that, and we can th just think of that here as, as creating a virtual thread to run that task. And then we create a, a second one to go and fetch from the database. So we've got two virtual threads that are running concurrently going to do the, uh, the, doing the fetching. The aggregation is, 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 is the same as before. If this code that we see on the screen here succeeds, all good. It's very likely that this code will execute faster than the sequential code that we saw on the previous slide because we have some concurrency going on here. We're fetching from over the network over to the web service over here, and we're fetching from the database over here. All good. Now let's talk through what can go wrong when, when, when there's, when there's a, 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 an, an error. And um, so we're, we're going to talk through the scenarios where we actually get a failure for, from one or the other. Now, before, before doing that, we just, I just want to quickly just point out, if you look on the slide slowly as, at the aggregation down at the bottom, you'll actually see two calls to future get. Gavin, by the way, showed you in his presentation earlier on um, all, all, all the possible things that can go wrong when you're actually using the future. Um, in this presentation, is, is, is we can assume here that the future one.get or future two.get might fail for some reason. And we'll see what actually happens. So the first thing is, let us suppose that fetching from this web service fails. OK, we're going to get an exception. That exception will, will um, it, it, it'll encapsulate what the real exception is, because you get back an, an, an execution exception. So it's useful from a troubleshooting point of view. I've got a useful stack trace. I've got a useful error message. All good. But, 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 but. I've left somebody running here because I've got two operations running concurrently. Um, the first one is actually failing, but my, 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 my virtual thread that's fetching from the database is still running away when this method throws. That's not great. I've now, I, 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 I've now, I've, I've got this sort of this, this method that I hoped would actually complete with my error, but it's actually gone and left a resource. It's left a thread running fetching from the database. That's not great. Now let's look at what would happen if the other way around. Let's suppose that the fetching from the database were to fail. So I, I, I've done two calls to get. The first one has succeeded. And then the second one is going to fail. The first one, I may have actually gone and waited several seconds for this, this service over the network to come back. So I've actually wasted a lot of time before I actually fail. So that's not great either. I haven't left a thread running, but I've actually, I've actually delayed throwing the exception, and that's not, that, 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 that's not great. So we can actually try to improve on this. So the first thing just to notice with, with, with this example before I improve it is, is that the, the, um, the executor service is, in this, in this example, is stored in a, a static final field. So it's actually a shared executor service. I can change this example and actually can actually, the, these things are so cheap to create, I can actually put it inside and create one of these executor services for each request. Now, we, we added, we, we, we retrofitted executor service to, to um, extend auto-closable um, in a, a couple of releases ago, and the semantics of the close method is to block until all tasks have completed. So this is good for the first failure that I actually showed you, which was leaving a thread running. In this case, at least the close method will block until all the tasks are completed and the virtual threads in this case have actually completed. Um, so, so this is good. I don't leave, an, I don't leave a, a, a thread running, but it doesn't solve the other issues here. If they've still got a failure, I'm still waiting for all of the threads to complete. So this is only partially fixing the problems that I was actually um, uh, um, uh, talk, talking about. Um, now, I can work on this further and I can actually start doing things like, well, if I get a failure over an exception on get here, I can cancel the other one. 
I can I can start to address some of the problems with, with, with code like that, but you go down that rabbit hole, the resulting code is a lot less readable, it's a lot less maintainable. If your boss comes back to you in five years' time and asks you to fix an issue in this, you'll be scratching your head looking at this code, wondering, why did I do this five years ago? So this is not great. So this is what structured concurrency is, 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 is all about. Um, it's, it sort of, if you were to put it all into one line, it's, it's if a task were to actually just split into several concurrent tasks, subtasks, then those subtasks complete before the, the main um, uh, uh, task com, um, continues. Now, in, in terms of where does this term actually come from? So it's, 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 it's been popularized the last couple of years. So, so if you go back to maybe around 2016, there was this, the, this guy working, Martin Sustrich was actually working on um, this uh, embedded network library. And so he coined the phrase, but it only became po kind of popular, at least within Java and some of the other languages in, the, in, in more recent time when there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a guy, I think he's a, he's a fellow in, 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 um, in, in, um, in, in Berkeley now was writing a li library in Python called Trio. And he was actually um, had some very, very insightful blogs in this area. And um, Nathaniel J. Smith is, 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 is his name. So he, he, I think, has introduced this term to the, um, to the wider community. If you go back through the literature, you can actually go right back to the 70s. There's, um, there's a, a very prolific pr pr educator at, that, at, at the time, a, a professor, um, Elliot um, Organic, and he wrote a, 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 a book on, on um, systems programming that um, dealt with a lot of these kind of concepts there but didn't use these, these, these terms. I think the terms is, is, is more recent. Anyway, you've got the term anyway into, 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 into a single line, which is actually quite good. Basic, basically, is, is, is if, if, if something decomposes into sub, so, uh, a number of subtasks, then they come together before the main task continues. Um, so what we wanted to do, now that we have virtual threads that are actually cheap enough to represent a concurrent task, is, is, is we wanted to come up with, with, with an API in the Java platform that, that, that would encourage this style of usage. Because using this style of usage reduces the amount of, of bugs that occur with cancellation and shutdown. And um, it'll help, it, it'll, it just say help encourage more reliable code. So what we're talking about, for, for at, least, for at least initially, is a very, very basic API. We're in, at this particular time, we are not talking about the definitive structured concurrency API. There are many, 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 many possible shapes of APIs, many, many directions that you can actually take. The, the goal here is to have something that's actually very, very um, um, simple to, to use. So this is a shape of the API that we're actually currently have in preview in both JDK uh, 21 and in 22. So what we have here is an API called Structured Task Scope. It lives in the Java Till concurrent package, and it's, it's an auto-closable. You, you use it with the try with resources um, uh, library concept. You create one in the, the expression that you provide to try, and then the close method will always block until all of the subtasks that are created inside that block have uh, com completed. The way this API works is, is the structured task scope defines a, a, a method to fork subtasks. So it's a bit like our submit, it's a bit like your executor service uh, um, uh, submit or, or, or execute methods. You give it a callable and it returns you back. It, it starts a virtual thread or whatever. You can actually configure all of this, this in, in the API. But for now, just think about it. Create, it starts a virtual thread that will actually run that, that uh, value returning method and returns you back a handle um, to, to, to get its result. There is a join method. The join method is actually on the structured task scope, not on the individual. So this actually has a, has a barrier um, to, and waits for all of the tasks that you have created to complete. And once they've completed, and, and uh, you can process the results. So, so, so think about it as opening a structured task scope, fork, 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 join, and then I process the result. That's the kind of the pattern that you use with this API. And then we start overloading some policies around that, but this is the pattern that we, that, that, um, that, that, that we use with, with this API. So now let's come back to our little example here. So this example is actually using something, a, a policy called shutdown on failure. So the way structured task works is, 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 the, is, is you, can, you can actually get it to short circuit. In this case, it's short circuiting when we get a failure or we get a, a, an, an, an exception. So I open my structured task scope, fork, 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 
And when I do join, the join completes when either all of the subtasks have completed, or in this case, the policy shutdown and failure, or we get a, a, a one of the subtasks fails. So I've gone to my database, I've gone to my web service, they're, they're, they're operating, um, um, uh, sorry, executing concurrently. If one of those things were to fail, then what happens is the join wakes up, we do our and, and we do our throw of failed, and we get our exception thrown, and the other subtask is cancelled. So we've two subtasks here. We, what, what, um, um, if, 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 if one of them fails, the other one gets cancelled. The other one may have completed already, it doesn't matter. The point is, 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 is that you get some short circuiting here when, when you actually get a failure. So we aggregate the results exactly as before, and, um, and that, this is how this actually works. So with this, with this um, pattern that we're actually seeing on the screen here is, is we avoid the problems that it was showing in the motivating um, um, example earlier on in that we don't have threads that are left behind. And in addition, we're not waiting for other things to complete when we get a failure. So this is just, 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 just one way to, to use this, 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 this API. Now, the other thing to just, just to point out is, is, is that we're getting, we're starting to actually see a tree structure emerge when we start using this kind of pattern. I've got my main task. It has forked two subtasks. I've actually got now two children. In, in this particular slide, though, I've just named them A and B just for readability. It's possible that the method that I've actually, that, that, that the subtask A has actually further split into A1 and A2. And on the, on the right side, B has split into B1 and B2. I've actually got seven threads here. I've actually seven concurrent tasks. The main tasks, A and B, A1, A2, B1, B2. So that's actually quite interesting. So there's a, a, a tree structure that's actually been reified underneath and, and because all of these relationships between the tasks and the subtasks are actually known to the runtime. And this is actually quite interesting and something that we will build on in, in time. And what this, what, what this tree structure, it actually allows us to do two things. One is it allows us to do cancel propagation. And the second thing is, is it gives us some observability. So when I talk about cancel propagation is, is in our previous example, with the, with the fetching from the database and fetching from the web service. If, if, one, of them if, 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 if one of them fails, we're able to actually to, 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 to do cancellation. But if the other subtask was actually split and split and split and split, you want to be able to cancel that entri entire tree of, of, um, of concurrent tasks so that you can actually roll back and, 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 and fail as soon as possible. So that's what this tree actually supports. The observability, is interesting when you actually have a problem. In the previous examples, I talked about, about um, fetching from the database or fetching from the web service. If they were to fail, you get a nice exception. But what if they were to hang? In the sequential code, I can actually use the debugger, I can use thread dumps, I can use all of these kind of serviceability, observability features to be able to see what's actually going on. But in the, in the, in the concurrent examples, that's actually really hard to do. I can, I can find maybe, I, maybe I can find my, my, my main task in the thread dump, but how do I know which of the subtasks in the thread dump that it's actually waiting for? If I have reified this, this relationship between the, 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 um, the, the task and the subtask, and they're represented by virtual threads, remember, then it's possible that I can actually get more information when something were to go wrong. And I'm just gonna show you for the moment what, what this looks like in, 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 in a thread dump. If you have binoculars in your, in, in your bag, now is a good time to actually to bring it out because I'm actually using quite a small font here. My apologies. So the thread dump I'm, uh, I'm using here is I'm actually creating it here with the, with, uh, the, the J command. That's the sort of the general purpose um, uh, um, a command line tool that you can actually send a command to, to, to a target VM. The command I'm actually using here is, is called thread.dump to file. This is one that we actually introduced in, 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 in JDK 19 as part of introducing virtual threads. And I'm actually generating the thread dump in, 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 in JSON format. Now, I'm showing you just one thread in this thread dump. And this thread is actually blocked on, on join. Um, let me go and highlight it there for those that didn't bring binoculars. So there's two things I'm actually highlighting here. One is in the stack trace, I can actually see that it's actually blocked on structure task scope dot join. And the second thing I'm actually showing you there is I've highlighted 
the thread ID. So one of the things is, 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 is about threads in the Java platform is they have an identifier. We introduced that uh, back for monitoring and management purposes back in, in JDK 5. We've doubled down on the use of, of thread IDs with the introduction of virtual threads because we needed something to be able to um, uh, be, be better identify them because virtual threads may not actually have a name, but they have an identifier and this is actually very useful um, for, for, for these type of scenarios. So here I have a, a, my, my main task happens to be running in, in, in virtual thread 34. And why is this useful to me? This is useful to me once you actually start revealing some more of the thread dump that's actually going on here. One of the things with this, th this thread dump, and the part of, I was talking about the reifying of, of the relationship between tasks and subtasks is the thread dump has actually, is actually allowing you to reconstitute the, th the groupings of threads in the runtime. In this case, number 34 is waiting on, on, on two subtasks. And I can actually identify what 34 is waiting for in this thread dump. Now you may look at this and say, this is, this is, this is just a, 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 a bunch of JSON code. This is actually parsable. In time, tools will be able to actually do a lot more visualization of, 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 the, of these kind of, of thread dumps. I was presenting at DevOps, I think it was um, uh, 2022, and we, I, I, as part of that demonstration, I actually used a, a, a thread visualizer that, that someone working on JavaFX was using. They were actually able to parse this and actually show me a little tree of, of the threads. Um, so that was actually quite, 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 quite useful. So what we have here is we've got our, our main thread 34, that's actually on, on the left, it's waiting for two subtasks, and I can see exactly what they're waiting for. If you look closely here, they're both actually doing an SSL handshake, which can be a quite, quite, quite an expensive thing because there's a, a, a lot goes on with a handshake. So the point about, of, of showing you this is just the observability that you get with the, with the, by having this tree structure. So I showed you uh, uh, something with a shutdown of failure, which was a short circuit when we get an exception. There's other, other interesting policies that you can have. And one of the other built-in policies we have is something called shutdown on success which is the policy to short circuit when you get a successful subtask. So there's sometimes you end up with scenarios where, where you send the same request to, to two services, or uh, one of them might be fetching from a cache, one might be fetching from a remote service, one of them is gonna come back first, and you can complete uh, early once, uh, once you get some result. And this shows the example of, 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 of using this. So same, same pattern as, as before, try with resources, open it, fork, 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 do my single join, and then I go and process the results. The thing about these policies is they provide an API that you can actually use to process the outcome. The policy of shutdown of failure, the only outcome is an exception. The poli the, when you've actually got a shutdown success, what is the outcome? The outcome is the winner. In this case, it's the result. So that's what the shutdown on, on success actually returns you. So in this example, we're actually fetching from um, um, two different remote remote services. So there's, there, 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 there are two clouds in this picture. The first that succeeds, this will actually cause the join to wake up. The other one will get canceled and the result will return you the first one, which is actually very useful. So there's two built-in policies in the current preview API, um, as I said, but you can build your own. And there's many other, other, other interesting things you can do once you have something to, 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 to build on here. Um, in, the, in, in the API shape at the moment is actually done through subclassing. We may be revisiting, re, 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 revisiting this, but the, 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 the point is you can extend this and implement your own policy to maybe to, to um, determine what, what the best short circuiting conditions are, to actually to uh, collect results. And importantly, the subclass defines the API to, cons to, to make available the outcome or the results or whatever it might be that the, 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 the the policy implements. Okay, so a couple other things I wanted to actually just talk about because they, they, they actually work together is, is, is Ron mentioned about the, um, the uh, uh, scope, scope, scope values. So um, as part of Project Loom, we have been revisiting thread locals. Um, Ron showed the example with the, uh, the, the simple date formatter and moving to the, uh, moving away from, stashing that in a thread local to a date time formatter. One, one other scenario that thread locals are often used for, and they're particularly used by frameworks, is to be able to, is, is, is for the, the, the case of implicit parameters. 
frameworks, calls the user code, user code calls back to the framework, that's, that's, and it's done through that with a callback. How does the framework make available context, pass through a whole series of callees, ba and, and, and back then to the framework itself? And, and this is where we've introduced a new API. Uh, it's currently in, 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 in preview as well, called sc Scope Values. And it's, it's, it's an interesting API because it actually can make avail available uh, data, you can actually pass it through a sequence of method calls without using method, me 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 method parameters. In addition, it's very, it's, it costs absolutely zero to support the inheritance of scope values into subtasks. And this is actually very interesting for structured concurrency. If I've got some context in, 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 in the scope value and I call some method that actually goes and consumes that, all good. I, I, I set the scope value, the callee goes and, and, and reads the, 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 the value of that uh, of scope value. But I come along and I decide to refactor that code to use structured concurrency. I'm now going to be executing in, 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 in multiple concurrent threads. How, how do I actually get the context that I've set up communicated securely and, 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 and in a performant way to all of those subtasks? And this is where we can combine structured task scope and scope values in, in, in interesting ways. And back to gray boxes again. So this one, I'm actually just showing you, um, a, 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 this, this talk isn't about scope values, but, but, but I want to actually just show you some scope value here where I've actually got some credentials. I'm gonna call some method that's actually going to, to, um, to, to execute some code with a credential set to some value. So the way this API works is, is there's a static method on scope value called where key value essentially, and then you can there's there's many forms out here. I'm actually just going to invoke a callable with 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 this value set. The, the, the semantics here is the credentials are set for the lifetime of that callable. Once the once the callable completes, the the uh, the, the 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 value of the um, that scope value no, long, no, no longer exists. So in terms of usage, it kind of looks a bit like um, a, a, a thread local, but it's much more efficient. Um, it, it, its lifetime is, 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 is much clearer and there's a lot, lot of other positives, positives than that. Now let us fill in their code that we had took from the previous example and we stick it into the gray box. So what's actually happening here is we've taken our structured task scope We've done our fork fork, so now we've actually got two subtasks now that are, that are executing our, our two services. And if they were to cons if they were to actually to go and attempt to get the value of the credentials, they will get the value of the credentials that was set by that where method. There's, there's inheritance of scope values into the subtasks. And that's actually a very, 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 very powerful thing to do. Okay, one other thing I want to talk about before I finish up is the, is, is the gatherers, Jep. I don't know whether people have actually looked at this. This is actually one of my favorite features that's in, in JDK 22. There is a new um, API on, 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 on streams. We all love streams, yes. Um, and this allows you to actually to go and create your own intermediate stream operations. It's basically, there's, if, you, if you think back to when streams were introduced in, 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 uh, in, in, in Java 8 with lambdas, there's been so many requests to add lots of other interesting um, intermediate operations into the pipeline. And um, now you can actually do them yourselves with, with, with gatherers. And gatherers basically, you could, at, at a high level, gatherers is basically allows you to, to um, um, deal with a, 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 an input stream of, um, uh, of elements and it, and it goes and sends a stream of elements downstream. Gatherers can be stateful, stateless. There's this accumulators. You can do all that kind of kind of kind of stuff. But there's an interesting um, set of gatherers that are actually built in. So there's, there's, there's built-in gatherers for things like um, folding, sliding windows, fixed windows, that kind of thing. Um, but there is one that it provides a mapping function. So it's 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 like the the map operation the the in in with streams, but it executes each one of the mapping functions concurrently in virtual threads. And let's go and look what that might actually look like. And this is kind of interesting in that here, here I've taken a very, very simple example just to give you an idea of what, what might happen. So, so a map concurrent is, is, is a, that value first is, is maximum concurrency. There was a question in the previous slide about, um, about semaphores, which, which was 
used to, to, to limit concurrency. Kind of think of this as, as limit, limiting concurrency here. And it's basically this, this, this gather maps an element, which is a URI or a URL if you like, and it maps it just to the, to, to the contents of, 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 that, of that resource. So I'm using it in a stream here by taking a stream of, 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 of URIs. I guess that could be an array of URIs. I'm going through my, my gather operation, which is actually going to do the concurrent mapping of those to their content, and then I'm going to aggregate the results. And what's interesting about this is, is, is that if you squint, then you can actually see there's some structured concurrency actually going on here. The main task is actually splitting into many subtasks that are actually doing this mapping and fetching from this roots, and then it's actually coming together at the end without leaving it some threads behind. So this is actually quite interesting. At the moment, this is actually not using our structured concurrency stru construct, but we can see where this will actually go in, in, in time. Okay, so that just gives you a quick run through of, 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 of where we are currently with the um, with, 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 um, uh, structured concurrency. So, we introduced it as a, as a preview API in 21. It'll read preview without changes in, in 22 when it releases next week. So if you haven't used preview APIs, you, you compile and you run with the and it enable preview option. I think, I think Gavin shows some, some, some examples in his, his presentation earlier on. We are working on some um, revisiting this API for an, another preview in 23, or at least we would propose a, a JEP for this for, 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 for 23. Um, this is a hard API to get right. Um, the, the API here is tiny. What I've showed you is actually tiny. We can actually get to look at this API in a very, very short period of time, but the design space is actually quite, quite, quite large. There's many possible API shapes that have been explored, and, and that's why it takes a number of iterations to, to, to get right. Main thing with this API is we need a lot more uh, real-world usage in order to get feedback of this before we can actually propose to make it a, a permanent API. So that's the current status of, of, of this feature. I showed two other JEPs as I was going along in here. I showed you the, the, uh, the scope locals, sorry, yeah, um, scope values, and that's, that's per preview. That's very close, I think, to, to becoming uh, permanent in the next, ne next release or two. And gatherers, is, is, its first preview is, 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 is in 22. The map concurrent, I think, we will, um, it looks, look, looks pretty good here. And I think it's important that there's actually feedback on that API before it becomes permanent. And that's it. That, that's it. That's all I want to. I wanted to leave t time for questions. I didn't know how many people were going to be here today. So this is the links just to to to, to the JEPs that I've talked about. Uh, four for four, which is virtual threads that was that 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 we made permanent in twenty one. The the other two um, JEPs that are in preview, and then we've got our mailing list where we ask people to come along with them. Um, their feedback from using real world usages, which is always very very helpful. Okay, so that's that that's that's all I have today. If you have questions, please shout. Thank you. Yeah, just a quick question on, so the structured concurrency constructs seem very similar to the fork and join API that's existed in, in Java concurrent for a long time. Is this meant to replace it or is it? Okay, that's actually, that's actually an interesting question. So you're asking with whether the, um, the sort of the parallel decomposition and, and, and the fork join, no, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a replacement to this. This is, if the, so fork join pool, is, which is I think what you're thinking about is more kind of for sort of recursive tasks, it's, it's, it's for, for parallelism. This is more about concurrency rather than, than uh, parallelism. So um, it's definitely not a replacement. This is, for, this is going to be very much for sort of more um, IO bound tasks, whereas the tasks that tend to be in fork join pool tend to be um, very, very short lived. Um, you know, if you use parallel streams or recursive decompos you know, the recursive tasks, they tend to be very, very short lived. So maybe a different kind of a time frame. Um, you mentioned shutdown on failure and shutdown on success. Are there, is there any managed retry logic where you don't want to lose Good thread, you know, good tasks that have got processed. You want to retry an element automatically. Is All right, that's actually a very good question. So the question is about re uh, about retry. So what I showed you is very much imperative type code. So you can actually do a loop. You can actually write a policy as well to to um, to be able to, to 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 do this kind of thing in in, in, in subclasses. So the, the built-in policies don't support retry, but you do that. You can actually do that yourself. Okay, I think we're, oh, oh, sorry, there's another question here. Uh, quick 
point. So you you mentioned uh, Java 23. You're looking at making some API changes. Uh, anything that you can share? What do you? Okay. So um, what what I will say is, is, is there's um, there's we haven't written the JEP yet to propose what we what, what what those API changes might be. There's multiple different um, API shapes. Um, that, uh, that 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 we're looking on as a, as a colleague of mine, Victor Klang, and I are actually spending quite a bit of time working through more use cases um, just to just see where we can actually improve on the current API. Criticisms of the current API, I would say, is is, is it looks kind of it, it's somewhat pr problematic to to um, uh, to be able to deal with the outcome after join. Um, the things like um, People people ask about the, the we, we try resources, why we didn't use other shapes. We've actually experimented with a lot of those kind of things. So I, I, I so I can't get, I can't answer your question yet on what we will actually propose in that yet. But 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 over the over the next while, I hope we will actually bring something to the mailing list for discussion. Is that it? Okay, I think we're done. Thanks very much.